Hey, Terry. Hey, Alex. We've been called out. (laughs) By who? By our daughters. They say we're not being our true, authentic selves on our podcast, that we've been too nicey-nice, and that we need to be real, girl. They're ungrateful. They are. But we're going to try. I'll promise if you promise, we'll try. We'll try. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. (laughs) Three, two, one. to another episode of Bob Sheen Yaya yeah, yeah, Travel the World. It's a place where we like to spend some time talking about all things travel and how travel can be part of your lifestyle, whether you're hanging out at home or you've got boarding passes in your hands. I'm really hoping for that soon. Travel influences us every single day. My name is Alex. I play the Bob Sheen I'm a mom, a teacher, a traveler. I'm a blogger. You can find me over at www.tgctravel.com. And an overall travel junkie, meet my best friend, Terry. Hello, I'm Terry. I play Yaya. I'm also a mom of one of the ungrateful daughters that thinks we're not being real. I am a teacher and I'm a U.S. traveler. But guess what? What? I'm planning a trip to Ireland. Yeah. It's true. So today is all about me. I love it. We're going to start planning my summer getaway with my family, or it could just be myself if they really make me mad. And I'm excited. So as always, I know, as always, we're going to share some of the things that keep us travel happy when we're not out and about, which we are not right now. So we're going to talk books and food, travel tips and products that we love. And it's all going to start with our special little segment we like to call Now Boarding. I am so excited for your trip. This is going to be great. And so our now boarding is all about the Emerald Isle, which I love. It's a place super near and dear to my heart because I'm half Irish and I grew up really knowing that I came from a super Irish family. And I know, Terry, you have a lot of Irish ancestry as well. I do. Not, I think, as Irish as you growing up, but I did. My son did the... um... Oh, goodness. One of those DNA tests, you spit in a jar, spit right. thing. Yeah, we do have some Irish in us, so we do want to head on over there and see what it's all about. Well, it doesn't surprise me. It is the number one travel destination of Americans overseas. So that's saying something. Yeah. yeah. So let's dig in. Let's talk about all of our now boarding picks. Let's start with a global book pick like we usually do. And my global pick book pick is for the traveler. It's a book called Good Night and God Bless. And this incredible manual has been compiled by Trish Clark, and she has put together all of the religious buildings that you can stay in. Places like convents and monasteries, um, different colleges that may have a Christian faith. All of these places all over Ireland and the UK, which there are tons of, and a lot of times these places are super old and therefore really greatly located in city centers. We're going to talk more about it later, but I love this book. Good night and God bless. It's a great, great travel manual. Awesome. Well, as I was thinking of my book picks, Mm -hmm. uh, one of them, I have two. One of them came up, um, Angela's Ashes by Frank McCourt, which is great. And I love reading memoirs from people. And this Mm. is all about, even though he grew up in Brooklyn, New York, he was from Ireland, Limerick, Ireland. And it's stories and anecdotes of his struggles of poverty. And I know this could be a shocker. I don't know. But his father's drinking issues. I mean... Yeah. So it was good. And then I went with another more popular, people probably know it more as a movie, but it's P.S. I Love You. Mm -hmm. The book is so much better. It's so different. So um, 
the character's husband, he's Irish, passes away and he leaves all these messages for her throughout. And she takes a trip to Ireland. And lo and behold, guess what happens? Guess. What happens? Tell me. She, she falls in love. What? Again. She learns to move on. Oh, it's great. It's great. Read the book, not the movie. The cathartic experience of Ireland. I love it. I love it. Hey, I do want to say if you are visiting Ireland, you need to have a good shoe game. And that is our travel product this week is talking about making sure that you have the right shoes to do the right job. Because even in the summer, it's a little chilly. And because it is a wet place in general, you are going to hit rain if you're there for more than a day. Um, You need to make sure that you have a good shoe game for sure. So I recommend like waterproof boots if you're the hiker kind of traveler and you're going to get out there and explore a lot on foot. I would definitely have a good pair of well-worn waterproof boots. My daughter brought um, Rafi's with her, which is one of, we love them so much um, because you're able to put them in the washing machine and wash them and they can air dry because they're made out of a plastic thread. So make sure that you really think your shoe game through maybe more than going somewhere else just because there is so much outdoors. Okay. So I won't be wearing my high heels. I don't think that's a good idea in the, in the farm, in the agriculture of Ireland. Well, I'm going to go with your theme. Uh, of the rain and my travel product is to make sure you bring a light jacket with a hood for those rainy showers and I know we talked about bring an umbrella don't bring an umbrella for me I'd rather just buy an umbrella if I'm there but you're gonna need something yeah and to tell you the truth I, I I'm really against the idea of a travel umbrella it's like a mini Kit Kat it's not enough it's just, yeah. it's not enough. And I just think I'd be better off with a hood, especially if I got to carry a jacket around with me anyway. So a light jacket to layer if you need it. If not, you could take it off and kind of put it away. I think it's definitely a better choice. And you are going to be outside a lot in Ireland. There's just so much to do that's outside. And so you need to really kind of come with the mind of being a doer. Sometimes there's places that we go in Europe where you can kind of be a looker, even though I'm really against that idea. I really think you need to kind of get your hands dirty and and where you are to really understand it very well. I do think that you need to be a doer in Ireland, particularly because that's where the fun is. The fun is in the interaction with the people. And if you are going to be outside, you kind of need to be prepared for those things. So my travel tip, really, really plan to be a doer. Make sure that you're getting in on those activities. And we'll talk more about those later. Okay. So my travel tip, obviously, not just for Ireland, but you know, anywhere you go, if you're being going and you're doing and it's raining and you need to have your laundry done. So my travel tip definitely is know where to get your laundry refreshed along the way, because if you don't, times could get desperate. Can I tell you this happened to me? This happened to me the last time I was in Ireland. I did not plan very well, and I had every intention of just kind of handing it over to the hotel that I was staying in, and I was willing to pay the price. Well, that person was on vacation for that week and I had to go and find one in the next town that we were going to. And thankfully, as all Irish people are, they were the nicest, most accommodating people to the party that I was in, which was a big party. And we'll talk about that later. Um, I can't even tell you how amazing it was to know that I had found a place because They are few and far in between. Like if you're in Athens, a laundromat, no problem. You're going to find somebody to do your clothes. No problem. I can find it in Krakow. I think it's really hard in Ireland to find these places. Oh. Yeah. Plan ahead. Plan ahead. Yes. Yes. So speaking of planning ahead, let's talk about travel tech. 
Okay. What, what is your travel tech um, recommendation this time around? Mine is to have your app for the Irish Rail. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you can do the Euro, but I really think the Irish Rail is going to be your best bet. It only runs in Ireland. And your prices are going to be better. And, it, you know, it would be just so much easier. Download that app and you can pre-purchase your tickets and you're on your way. You know, um, you know, in your group of friends, there's always the one friend that's just a little bit different, but super fun to be around. And that's why they're in your group. Yes. Okay. Ireland is that friend in Europe. And they just do things a little bit differently. And you do kind of have to kind of get on board with their systems versus the continental Europe systems. And I think this is a perfect example of that. Getting the Irish Rail app over getting the Eurail app is going to save you so much time and hassle and money. So um, I do think it's a good one. I have two um, apps for Dublin. Um, Dublin's a great walking town and when it's nice out there's a ton of public art in Dublin just like there is all over Europe and a lot of cities are taking advantage of that and they're creating apps to kind of tell you the story of everything that you're looking at and I will say by far nobody tells a story better than an Irishman nobody <laughs> they are the most amazing people and they have apps for that now. The first one is called Art Tracks, T-R-A-X. And uh -huh. it gives you a couple of pathways to walk through the city and has you stop at certain places and kind of tells you a little bit about them. And the second one is a map-based app called Story Map that if you happen upon a particular place that they have a story for, you can kind of hit play at that place and it will tell you the story in true Irish style. So fabulous. There's nothing like Irish storytelling. It's an art form. It is truly an art form to me. I'm downloading it. Oh, fabulous. Cause you're going to love it. When you go, you're going to love it. Okay. We've got a lot of logistics under our belt now. Let's get inspired. You inspired me with P.S. I Love You. Now that I remember that, like I have seen that movie and it is great. What else would you say? What's another in piece of inspiration? Let's go back in time. Let's okay. go back a little bit. Not as, not as up to date, but The Quiet Man with John Wayne. Mm. Cute little mm. story. He is... Um, Irish, so he moves back, mm -hmm. and he wants to buy his family's farm, mm -hmm. and guess what happens? He falls in love. Girl, he did. <laughs> he found himself a red-headed Irish girl. Happens to yeah. all of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is such a great classic story. Bless you. Um, it is such a great classic story. I love it. I, it really is a super good one. Um, now, on the complete opposite spectrum of that, mm -hmm. I will tell you, there is a movie called Hunger. And those people who know about Irish history, when they hear about a movie called Hunger, I bet they already know what the movie's about. Um, those people that are very familiar with Irish history will tell you about a guy named Bobby Sands who went on a hunger strike during the troubles in the 70s. And we'll we'll talk about that in our main feature segment. But Michael Fassbender plays Bobby Sands in this. And I'm very intimate with this story. And I have to tell you what an incredible, powerful job he does with what he's given. Um, you know, he's in this prison called the maze and it's just it's crazy and you know he winds up dying and you can actually go visit his grave now um he is definitely kind of like a martyr of the um irish troubles movement in northern ireland and this movie really tells the story very well super super great 
Hey, before we go any further, I have some exciting news. We have our very first sponsor, and I think we're going to hear from them right now. Uh, we can't end our now boarding segment without talking about one of our favorite topics, which is food. Yay, food. That's Yay. a good topic. It is such a good topic. And I have to tell you, I feel like in the past, people have totally dismissed all of the UK and Ireland as crappy food. And I agree. There was a time when it was all crappy food. I 100%. Nobody likes plain oatmeal less than me. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. I have to say, I feel like Ireland is getting their game on, their food game on. And one of my absolute favorite treats is something called boxty. It's a potato pancake with like gravy and toppings on it. And there's 50 bazillion ways to order this. Girl, it is so good. Ooh. I can eat all of it. So, you know what's so funny about us? Most people like to talk about shopping and souvenirs and what are you going to get? Not us. Nope. We want to know where to eat, what to eat. And the nice thing, you know, you think about Ireland, it's an island. So what should we have? Seafood. Say it, girl. It's true. Seafood. Eat it all. Eat I it agree. Get in my belly. Get in my belly. And here's the thing. I don't think people think seafood when they think of Ireland. Like no, you don't. Shepherd's pie and bangers and mash and all that. Other... Yeah. No, no. Hear us now. Eat the seafood. It's so good. Terry, today we're taking a second pass at creating the ultimate itinerary for your trip to Ireland. Yay! I'm so excited for you guys. I think this is an incredible place to go. As a matter of fact, it's the number one travel desti destination for Americans. More people go to Ireland than any other destination in the world. Very cool, right? Well, why is that? Well, probably because so many people in the United States have some sort of Irish roots. You know, our Irish roots go all the way back to pre-revolutionary times. And one in five Americans have some sort of Irish um, ancestry in them. So it only really makes sense that so many people are very interested in it from our country. As a matter of fact, people are so interested in it that they wind up, uh, the government has wound up putting the customs control over in Ireland to come back. So when you kind of come back through to the United States via Ireland, you clear customs before you board your plane. That's cool. Yeah, it is. It's a really, it's so much better than doing it after you're so tired after being on the plane the whole time. Yeah. I, yeah, I like it. So tell me, what interests you about Ireland? What is it that makes you want to go? Well, you know, we did the Ancestry, whichever, what do they call? Ancestry.com. Mm -hmm. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, my son did the... Um, What's the, the spit in the bottle thing, you know, and you send it off. And so, of course, we got a portion, you know, coming back. You, like you said, we had some Irish in us. So I think it just kind of intrigues us. Besides, you know, Caleb really wants to go and he loves him a good Guinness. So, oh, there you go. <clears throat> yeah, that's there the only go. reason to go. Yeah, yeah. So I know in talking to you that we've been talking a lot about getting you started on your trip. And I think that's what we're going to focus on today is getting you like over there and started because there's no way we could fit everything about Ireland into one episode. It would be like a seven hour long episode. So right, right. we're, we're going to call this Ireland 101 and kind of just focus in on, on getting there and getting our bearings. And maybe let's talk about maybe the capital Dublin. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm ready. I got some good questions for you to help guide my itinerary, hopefully. Okay, I've poured my drink. I am ready to answer anything you have. Go for it. So first off, you know, we're planning the trip. I need to determine how long I need to give Ireland. So what's my best, how much time do I need to devote 
to this trip over? I think that you can enjoy Ireland in as little as four days and you can stay indeterminately for weeks or even months and not see everything that this country has to offer. For the for the family trip, like you guys, um, I would say two weeks unless you get angry at each other when you travel, and then I would dial it back to 10 days. Well, you know, I am traveling with the family. Yes. So okay. maybe, maybe 10 days? 10 days to two weeks. I think that is a good amount of time. So let's talk about where do I want to stay? Where do you want to stay? Well, I think maybe the first thing that we're going to do is fly you there. So Shannon or Dublin, I would say, I would say it doesn't matter. Uh, I think a lot of people think that Shannon's the better airport. I don't necessarily believe that. I think you can kind of get enough out of both. They're just a place to land. Um, okay. But I think when it comes to where you're going to stay, whether it is Shannon or Dublin that you're starting off on, Ireland is one of those countries that's got some far more unique picks than other places. You know, long before the era of Airbnb, the B&B was a staple in Ireland. And it was definitely something that um, was done top notch. The idea of renting a room at, or a couple of rooms in your house and serving a big breakfast in the morning, this kind of originated in this area of the world. And I, quite frankly, I don't know who does it better. There's a lot of small places to go. So having a traveling group, the smaller, the better, in my opinion. I think you have more, um, options. And there are also hostels. There are incredible castles that are privately owned or owned by hotels that you can stay in. And, you know, you could also check out like the monasteries and convents. You know, we talked about that book in the um, now boarding section called Good Night and God Bless. Yes. Uh, there's some incredible options in there. And they're not only affordable, but a lot of them, because they're older institutions, are in the city centers, in the downtown, where you're uh, able to walk to everything that you're really interested in seeing. So I do think that that's kind of an underrated use of um, all the different unique accommodations that you can get. So definitely look around. Don't just take a hotel. If you just stay in a hotel room in Ireland, you're missing out on part of the experience. Okay. So now I know that I'm going to stay up to two weeks. I'm going to fly into Dublin. Okay. Definitely going to stay away from the chain hotels. I really want to get the experience. Right. Now, Am I going to focus all my time in Dublin or should I branch out? Do I need to well, stay in one place? I I have to say, I think for the first time visitor, I would definitely check in in Dublin for a few of those days. Whatever your allotment is, I would give at least three days to Dublin because you do want to kind of experience the nightlife and you do want to um, see some of the grander things that Ireland has to offer. And so many of them are based in Dublin. However, not getting out of the city is equally as perilous to your trip. Um, I, I think if you don't get out, you're missing the point. Um, so you do need to kind of get out there and you are going to have to drive in Ireland. It, it is a thing. Ooh, it's a thing. Okay. So it's either going to be me driving or my husband, Michael driving. Are the cars big enough? Well, you get what you pay for. <laughs> you get what you pay for. I, and I will tell you when you go to Europe, actually, when you go kind of anywhere, if you could drive a standard transmission, you will always get a better price. A, oh, an okay, automatic good. And automatic is an upgrade. So they do have minivans that you can rent. You can rent the little old jalopies too. But basically anything that you can rent here in the States, you can rent over there. So awesome. I th yeah, I think you're good. However, I will tell you that while the highways are very modern and very wide and open, the back roads where you will wind up going, like it's mm -hmm. inevitable, 
can be very narrow. So, you know, making the decision to have a van or a larger car, you may want to think about it. The smaller car you have, the less nervous you will be on those twisty, windy, narrow back roads. Well, the smaller the car, the shorter my vacation. <laughs> hey, you, you've got a point. <laughs> yeah. so, for those for those that don't know Michael, he's over six feet tall, and it's going to take some headroom to make sure that he's comfortable <laughs> inside a car. Yeah. So I would not expect to, like, rent a Suburban. That It's okay. not going to happen. So we're going to drive. It's We have to. So do I have other, what are my other transportation options? Well, I will say if you're going from city to city, you can kind of skirt renting a car. Like say if you're going from Dublin to Galway or Dublin to Cork or even Dublin up to Belfast. Um, all of those are great train rides. And Nobody loves the train more than me. I love the train system in Europe, all of it. And Ireland is no exception. It just doesn't go to the nooks and crannies. So you can kind of take a train. Um, let's say if you're kind of thinking about going like um, counterclockwise from Dublin and going up through Belfast and kind of around mm -hmm. the country, which is totally doable in that amount of time, um, I would maybe take the train up to Belfast and rent my car up in Belfast. Just to kind oh, of have okay. a, a little bit more experience. You know, you can rent a car at in a city center for sure. Okay. I'm in Dublin. Okay. Just got there. We're, we've taken that first day, like we do any place we go, and we kind of get ourselves centered, you know, right? find out where we're going. So tell me now, what are some of Dublin's icons that I need to make sure I go to? Well, I will say this. Probably the first thing that comes to mind is what your boy would love, which is the Guinness experience. Oh, good. I'm going to leave him there. Yeah, yes, you can, um, because it's the number one travel tourist destination in all of Ireland, which kind of blows my mind because I have to put this out there. They don't make beer there. Stop. <laughs> like, like you're going and they, it's all about beer. It's all about Guinness. It's all about Guinness. It's all about Guinness. They don't make they don't make it there. OK, that's a secret. Do not share that with him. Okay, I won't. They also don't make whiskey at the Jameson's factory. Oh, that's safe for me. Yeah, but okay. Again, disappointment, disappointment. Yeah. Hey, listen, I mean, it's supposed to be state of the art and all that stuff. And I guess it is. I've been there. I've seen it. However, I just don't think it's a tourist attraction. I would rather go to a pub and drink a, a Guinness there. Amen. And, and listen to music there. So, I mean, that's the, kind of like the first icon. The second icon that I think people really think about is the Book of Kells. Yes. Um, so the Book of Kells is this incredible illuminated manuscript um, that is um, taken care of so beautifully at Trinity College in the center of the city. And it's in their library. It's got a beautiful installation and you kind of walk through and learn about it and then you go in and they have one of the pages open and you can see the illuminated manuscript. It is like, it's breathtaking. It's breathtaking. But can I say this? If you don't know what I mean when I say illuminated manuscript and you're not willing to do the research to understand the power of the wow behind this illuminated manuscript, Mm -hmm. I would, again, refer you down the street to the pub, go have a Guinness and listen to some great music. I don't know that you necessarily need to do it if it's not your thing. If you are an Irish history buff, it's your world and, and like that's that's a moment for you. I am there to support you in it. I think it's amazing. I think it's amazing. However, I don't recommend it if you have no context in why it's such a big deal. Okay. So I'm going to put that on my back burner. Yeah. You may want to. Keep you may want to. As a thought in my head. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Other icons. Um, 
Well, I would have to say that Grafton and O'Connell Street come to mind. Grafton is the big shopping pedestrian way, which has got okay. a lot of stores on it. It's very touristy, and you'll find a lot of the Euro chains on there. You know, there's, um, what's the one, like, um, not Century 21. That's not the one I'm thinking of. It's, um, so oh, in the house. Well, actually, Century 21 is a clothing store some in some places. <laughs> Oh. But yeah, there's a lot of that kind of stuff there. Um, and it, it's fun. There's a lot of street artists, you know, you can enjoy it, walk down it. Um, O'Connell Street is the more historical walk. It's kind of the Grand Boulevard. There's traffic on it. And it will lead you to what I think is kind of the epicenter of how the Republic of Ireland became the Republic of Ireland, and that is the general post office. And you may say, oh, Bobsha, Bobsha, why are you sending me to a post office? Girl, I'm going to tell you, it all went down at the post office is what I'm saying. Back Ooh, in the day, okay. in 1916, there were a dozen or so men who decided that they had had enough, enough is enough. And what our Boston Tea Party is to us, the general post office is to the people of Ireland. It's the day when they went, I don't think so, boss. No, and thank you. No, thank you. And they had had enough. And this is was kind of like the epicenter of where they kind of planned it. And they read the Proclamation of Independence from there and all this other kind of stuff. So I, I think it's a really great historical stop. It's not a ton. It's really manageable. But it happened there. You're walking in those footsteps. And I do think that that's important. That's cool. Um, yeah. So I would not miss that one. Um, and And... Similarly, I would not miss kind of the chapter two of that story, which is Kilmainham Jail. Um, it's over on the other side of town. Mm -hmm. And these dozen or so guys who were brave and fierce, you can imagine what happened. It was it did not end well, and it did not end well at Kilmainham Jail jail. You can see the last letters to their loved ones before they're executed. Um, you will actually, movie buffs will actually like this because Kilmainham Prison was used in many of the um, movies. And I'm trying to think of the Robert De Niro movie that was um, that this was mm. the setting for. I can't think of it off the top of my head. But it, when you walk into like the Victorian side of the prison, like the architecture is Victorian with all the wrought iron, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, I totally know it. I've seen this before. You know, like, so uh, it's one of those places that you know and you don't even realize, you know. So I think yeah. that that's also a super cool one. And I have to say, kudos to the tour guides there. They are spectacular at telling this story. Really, really good. So um, I think it's a super quality stop for oh, sure. Cool. Yeah. And you could kind of walk in there with no context. Uh, you know, like, I don't know the story at all. Or you can walk in there with like, um, I was an Irish history major in an Irish Catholic college in the United States. And I know absolutely everything you're about to say. And both of you will be satisfied. You gotcha. know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So that's definitely a good one. If you're just joining us, this is the Bob Shane Yaya Travel the World podcast. We're so happy that you're here today as we plan Terry's big trip to Ireland. Yay! She and her family are starting to plan that big old trip to enjoy the Emerald Isle. But hey, there's no need for you to take any kind of notes. Just use the link in our show notes to go on over to our website at www.tgctravel.com to read up on all the tips and tricks that we talk about today. Okay, so you're telling me the icons. I like to find the high, the the hidden gems. Always, we always talk about Come hidden gems. gems. Yeah, always. So, what are some that I want to to seek out when I'm in Ireland? I do have a couple of good ones up my sleeve for Ireland, especially in Dublin. Okay. okay. The first one that I want to tell you about is a place called Epic. It's a new experience, and it is the Irish Immigration Museum. It's in a 
very funky setting. It, I love it. And you go in and it's super interactive and it kind of takes you through how 33 million people across the world claim Irish ancestry while 6 million still live in the country. Those are modern statistics. And there are also genealogists there that will start pointing you in the right direction. Oh, cool. It's like a very cool first stop. It's brand new. It hasn't been open that long. I want to say maybe a year, a year and a half as we record. So it's definitely worth it. Definitely a a for sure stop that I don't think is on everybody, everybody's radar yet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Another one that I totally recommend is... Oh, I know. And you may really appreciate this one. Um, There are two stadiums. There's the new one called Aviva Stadium. Mm -hmm. And there is the old stadium, which is Croke Park. And they play Irish national sports there. So Irish rugby or Gaelic football. Oh, cool. I would totally go to a game if there if you can get tickets. I mean, they're usually kind of sold out in the summer, so um, but I would totally look around and see if you can go to a game because there's nothing like it. And literally blindly choose a side, it doesn't matter. Buy the striped scarf that looks like the Harry Potter scarf. <laughs> go cheer on one side or the other and really enjoy it because there's nothing like these Gaelic sports. It's so cool. Um, however, if you can't get into a game both aviva and croke park offer stadium tours and you remember you did that in dallas i did yeah and they're that good they're they're super cool yeah so i think that that's totally worth it and maybe not something that everybody is doing yeah but something that we would like yeah i think so i think that it kind of speaks to a lot of people and i think um you know, even though it's sports, it's still Irish heritage and it, you know, it kind of has to do with the history and there's like a lot going on there. So I think that's a good one for a lot of people in a group. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any more gems? Are we good? Any um, more gems? Okay. I have two goofy ones that I'll share with you that okay. are in Dublin. Okay. The first one is at the Arlington Hotel, which is on the north side of the River Liffey, very close to the Hay Penny and O'Connell Street bridges. Um, in the basement, they have a great show. It's a dinner show. Like, it's not the best food in the world, but that's okay. And it's called Celtic Nights, and it's just Irish music and dance. And they- yes. they Yes, it's fun. It's not meant to be anything spectacular. It's just meant to be like, here's what we do. And it's good traditional dancing. And the musicians were really great. I highly suggest getting your table, your seats as close to the stage as possible so that you can watch when those girls dance. There are guys too. Um, Your mashed potatoes will vibrate they will bounce up and down because it is so cool. So I would definitely do that. My sister actually got pulled on stage by them. It was adorable. She would. Yes. So I think that's a great first night place to go because it kind of puts you in the spirit of everything, you know, a little music, a little dance, uh, you know, a little food for your stomach that you're not so picky because you've been on a plane all day. I think it's a great first stop and, and it's very old school. It's very kitschy, but I think it's well worth it. I think it's, it's fun. The other one, if you're really into like goofy stuff is St. Mikan's church. Um, which is on the north side of the river. And you can go on a crypt tour there and sign me up. Okay. I have to tell you, it's not the largest crypt in the world. It's nothing special. What makes this so fabulous is the Scooby-Doo like crypt keeper who takes you on this tour (laughs) with his Scooby language with an Irish accent and he's telling you about all of this and you kind of have to just take a minute and pause and realize how ridiculous it is and it was a lot of fun we had a good time I we enjoyed it completely if that's not your thing I get it but I will tell you 
we laughed a lot during that particular experience. So that's definitely a hidden gem to me. <laughs> well, that sounds fun. But now yeah. tell me, what do I want to pass on? Because I don't want to get over there and do things and get stuck and be like, why did Alex not tell me to not do this? Okay. Here's what I would pass on. Okay. And I'm, I will give you options instead of doing the things that I would tell you to pass on. I will tell you to go do other things. Okay. The first thing I would pass on is the Guinness experience. And I know, I know, I hear all of you beer enthusiasts. Can I just tell you, I enjoyed the, in going to both and going to the Guinness experience and in going to the Smithix experience, which is in Kilkenny, not that far away. The Smithix experience was far more interesting to me as somebody who's like into beer, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm not, but I will tell you, I, I just thought it was more intimate and a little bit more interesting. So I like the Smithix experience over the Guinness experience. If you want to get all the Guinness hype, fine, I get it, but I would pass on it. It's not my thing. Um, if you do pass on the Book of Kells, mm -hmm. I highly... I highly recommend going to the Rock of Cashel, which again is not that far outside of Kilkenny, and it still gives you that ancient Irish feeling, for sure. Okay. Okay. So if if you don't want to go into the library and do the whole thing, and you may, and I, it's totally worth it for those of you who are enthusiasts. The Rock of Cashel, I think, is very interesting, and you know, get on a tour there and listen to the stories. Um, because I do think that that's a very important piece. So those would probably be the two biggest ones that I would probably be like, eh, I could do. pass on the, yeah, I could pass on those if they don't interest me. Okay. So I've spent my time in Dublin. I'm ready to spread my wings a little bit, mm -hmm. but not sure I want to just go and stay somewhere else. Maybe I want to do some day trips from Dublin. Is mm -hmm. that possible? If it is, tell me where to go. I think you totally can do day trips from Dublin. I would actually set yourself up in a ring. I would do things in Dublin and then I would get on the train or the car and I would get out of town. Um, so I would go to Belfast. Um, you can either go back and forth to Dublin uh, on the train or go up to Belfast and rent a car and kind of continue from there, which is my suggestion. Mm -hmm. um, Kilkenny wins the Tidy Town Award almost annually. It is adorable and has so many great things in it. Um, so Kilkenny is totally worth it. Galway is on the Western coast and, and kind of not experiencing the Western wild Atlantic way of Ireland, I think is a shame. I would definitely make sure that you get some of that in. Um, you can go down to Cork or Waterford. There are plenty of places that you can get out because Ireland is really a manageable size. I would choose to either go north and, and counterclockwise or south and clockwise and kind of find your way back to Dublin one way or the other. Gotcha. Yeah. If I want to travel away and stay places, you know, where, where should I go after Dublin? If I'm ready to take my bags and load up my little rent a car and head out, where should we go? I think my suggestion is I would go north to Belfast, north okay. toward Belfast, because um, the story of what happens at Belfast is kind of the next chapter after what happened in Dublin. Like it, it kind of works together. Like if you start the story in Dublin, you can continue it in Belfast years later um, with an issue called the Troubles. And those of you that know um, modern Irish history know that after the Easter uprising in 1916 in Dublin, um, years later in the late 60s, 70s, 80s, up until pretty recently, um, there's been an era called the Troubles, which is kind of where you get the IRA stuff in and, you know, all of that kind of stuff that happened up in Belfast, and which is an incredibly interesting story about whether or not it's about religion or politics or um, it, it's quite fascinating. And I think 
seeing that and understanding that kind of gives you quite uh, an insight into modern Ireland. Um, and, you know, you can start to see people who really care about the issues, people who maybe don't, people who were affected by the issues far more than others. And um, you can also see why Southern Ireland became such a popular travel destination because the North was having so many issues for so many years. So the North is open, and I do think that it's completely worth getting up there and seeing, Um, not to discount going around. But we're going to cover, this is what I'd like to do. I'd love to cover Belfast and the Wild Atlantic Way in our next planning session, um, because there's there's so much to cover. Probably the most important thing that I can say about Ireland, the most important, is do not discount the art, the beautiful art of storytelling. You know, people kiss that Blarney Stone and they have the gift of the gab for a reason. Um, (laughs) I would really make sure that whatever I'm doing, whether I'm in Dublin or I'm out and about in some other area of the country, is make sure that I take advantage of any kind of storytelling opportunity. Um, And one of the places that you'll see that is in a pub, which is the European living room in Ireland. You know, it's where people go to hang out and relax and unwind. And there's music and story and dance and drink and conviviality. And, you know, a lot of people come in and they say, what's the crack? What's up? That's what it means. And I do think that that is probably the most important piece not to be missed is that storytelling concept. So get out there and go on the pub crawls, whether they're literary and you're doing kind of like um, a Bloomsday um, pub crawl or you're doing it for music or dance or, you know, one of those kind of things. Because I think that unlike the pub crawls in the United States where everybody gets hammered, when you go there, you know, pubs close at 1130 or what they say is half 11. And, you know, it's not, it's not an excess like everybody thinks. It's, it's not like something you're going to overdo. It's quality versus quantity. Yes. And the quality comes in the storytelling for sure. So I was, Yes, I would definitely make sure that you get a pub crawl in in Dublin and then get out there in those pubs in, in the country because there that's where you'll find the the authentic musicians and, you know, they're pouring that beer not because it's some fancy show. It's because that's how you pour the beer, you know. Um, yeah that that's how you get it. If you ask for a pint, you're going to get a Guinness. You're not going to get anything else. So, you know, like it's definitely something to get used to. Um, so I think that there's a lot to be said for getting started and kind of planning. There's so much to do in Dublin. There's so much to offer. And then you kind of start making your way out of there. So I can't wait to talk about part two, Terry. It's going to be great. I am so excited. You know, the travel industry has taken quite a blow from several global issues, including the war in Ukraine, the climb out of the COVID-19 crisis, and inflation that makes it hard for people to get out into the world like they want to. At this point, leading experts are predicting that it's going to take up to three years for the travel industry to bounce back to full force. One way that you can help the travel industry is to like and subscribe to 10 microbloggers. Each time you do, you're telling all those travel industry experts that you are ready to enjoy everything that the world has to offer, and you can start with us. That's right. You can find us on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and even LinkedIn at Babsha and Yaya. That is B-A-B-C-I-A and Y-I-A-Y-I-A. We'd love to hear from you. Contact us at bobsheandyaya at gmail.com with your questions, suggestions, favorite travel tips, products, and travel trends so that we can share your ideas in the future. Bob she and Yaya is our home base for everything we love about travel. It's where our blog and show notes live and where we share access to all of our resources, including travel literacy for kids. 
We always have new posts about all the things we love about travel, including today's topics, as well as feature destinations, travel lifestyle, and stories to make you smile. Didn't get all of that? No worries. Just check out our show notes for all of the ways to stay in touch and links to anything we chatted about in this episode. As always, thanks for joining us for our journey.